And now for my next number, I'd like to return to the classics. Perhaps the most famous classic in all the world of music. Hey there! It's the most wonderful time of the year. And it is, because this is the time. I always look forward to this. Every year I do this, I look forward to it. Because this is the moment I get to talk about my goat pens. Greatest of all time. And uh, I saw there was some discussion about whether these videos actually make sense. Because I called it Goat, Greatest of All Time. And then I don't necessarily discuss what is objectively the greatest of all time. Uh, in my first video, for example, I included the Pilot, sorry, the Platinum Preppy, inexpensive pen, writes well, etc. And now I basically just include a whole bunch of, to be honest, fairly expensive pens. The issue, though, is these are my emphasis on my goat pens. Yes, my greatest of all time pens. So I'm not saying these are objectively the greatest pens ever made. If I was unclear about that, I'm sorry. This is my shortlist of pens that I absolutely love and that I cannot part with. And yes, there is a little bit of evolution and a couple of these will be the same as last year and some of them were in there two years ago and some of them are new, okay? I've tried to organize them a little bit. And I, the reason I keep doing this is that they're right here, right next to me. Um, I've tried to organize them a little bit so that there's a bit of a story to them. I'm going to walk you through them. We're going to do writing after that. And I always hope that this video, if nothing else, is just going to provide a little bit of eye candy. And I'm getting the feeling that people like it when I talk about personal stuff in videos, so this is all very personal because I've selected all of these pens. And this year, I've limited it to 12 plus 2 pens. And the plus 2 will come back to you. Let's start at the very beginning. Italics, Parsons Essential. Why? Why the Parsons Essential? Why this? This is by far the most affordable pen on the list. Made by, uh, by uh, Italics Pens, that's um, uh, mrpen.co.uk exclusive. Uh, pens are made somewhere in the east and I like this pen a lot. Why do I like it? This has the 1.3 millimeter italic nib on it. Very, very nice grind. Simple pen, Iridium Point Germany nib, um, but cut into an italic by Peter Ford, the gentleman who sells these. I think it's a solid pen, and I love it. It's a pen I do keep coming back to. I don't necessarily use it every week, but I, I love it. It's uh, metal too, so it's a very robust model. It's relatively really affordable, especially for what you get. It has an insane range of nib options from fine, medium, broad to italics to uh, uh, stubs to cursive italics to whatever. And I think it's very nice. It's also a nice size, being metal, bulletproof. Uh, it's it's relatively heavy. I also think it's a nice looking pen, nice shiny piano lacquer and all that. It works. So this is definitely a goat pen for me. And those nibs are really nice. If you've never tried one, and you're in the opportunity, yeah, you have the opportunity to do so, pick one up. They're very, very nice. The next pen is my loyal viewers. I will be able to figure out what this is, but it is the Visconti Opera Elements. And the reason this is in here every year is that this is the first luxurious pen I bought, so gold nib, uh, etc. And I still absolutely love it. Uh, I think this pen has a lot going for it. There was brown, black, blue, uh, and this red, uh, the, the element, so this was fire. And I think it is stunning. The celluloid use for this is nothing short of stunning. So much depth and detail to it. It's really, really nice. Almost like a candy cane. Has my initials on there with the uh, my pen system. Has this bayonet closure so that the facets always line up. Uh, squaring the circle, circling the square. I still always forget, but has a nice uh, uh, square um, diameter. What do you call that? Uh, diameter profile, square profile. Sorry, with the rounded off edges. 14 karat nib from the good old days when Visconti had gold nibs. 
perfect nib, tuned perfectly, it's just a medium nib, has a nice amount of spring, adds a lot of character to your writing. I absolutely love it. This is a pen I cannot part with. The next pen in the lineup is the Parker Dual Fold, and not just any Dual Fold, this is the Ackermann Dual Fold, when Ackermann uh, was uh, in business for 100 years. In 2010, they made this, they're still in the Passage in The Hague, <clears throat> and I think this is a stellar pen. The orange is perfect, it's just the right colour, not too bright, not too dull, it's perfect. Three rings, um, a lot of symbolism in there, for example here at the top, the finial, you have the, the Passage is sort of uh, like a, a little mall, which has a, a central round thing and then three arms, uh, you know, with, with shops. Uh, it's in there. Uh, I think it's beautiful. And what makes this pen perfect uh, is that my dear friend Paul from Ackermann um, said, Oh, you want something interesting? I have something interesting. So he opens a little drawer and out comes a vintage uh, Parker stub, uh, which is an authentic Parker factory stub, so it's not nib or anything, this is how it came, straight from the factory, and this thing writes like a dream. Beautiful, crisp, nice line variation, I love it. And it's just a humble dual fold, it's nothing super fancy, but because of that special Ackermann edition, limited edition, I think it's great. And a nice size, very comfortable, and this is a nice pen to carry, if you don't want to have something super flashy on you, just a good reliable writer that also I think looks nice. I think this is a great pen. They're pretty much sold out by the way, so if you want one you'll have to hurry. I don't even know if they still have them. The next pen in the lineup, uh, as always there's quite a couple of Italians in my uh, lineup and this is another one. Also by the way, just ran into this at Akamam uh, and I, um, I think this is a very nice pen. The Stipula Etruria, and uh, the reason I, I like this so much is not just the material. You see I'm leaning forward a bit so that it catches the sun, but this is some serious marbling. Look at that, I mean it's, it's stellar. Also a very nice size of pen, a little bigger but not a super oversized pen, so very comfortable I think for pretty much every hand in the world. And this pen had a very nice italic. I thought it was 1.3 millimeters, but it's very, very nice. Nice crisp italic, good line variation, gold nib, and it writes fantastically. It doesn't skip, it doesn't do anything wrong. It has perfect calibration and it writes all the time, every time. And again, this material is hard not to love. I'm very happy to have found that and I, I think it's a beautiful, beautiful pen. The next pen uh, I got on my birthday uh, this year, <clears throat> sorry, it's a Visconti and it is the Carbon Dream. A larger pen, uh, clearly uh, it has the, the carbon fiber on there, this ripple uh, I think is, is very nice. It is a demonstrator, I don't know how well you can see that but there is ink in there uh, so you can always check your ink level very easily. Du dual, we call that double reservoir power filler. So it has a lot of ink, and I love this. I, I love it. Has a, it had one of the palladium nibs. I happen to have a, a, a an old style 18 karat oblique stub that Visconti does or did. Um, I put that on. So you have a, a, a very spectacular nib on there. A lot of line variation. Very very interesting. Metal section, nice, big, very comfortable to hold. Quite heavy because of that metal end cap. So it's it's a heavy writer, um, but a beautiful size, and I think this is a stellar pen, and one that I really really enjoy using. Uh, this is also a looker. I mean, this pen has a, has a. I think it's a beautiful finish. I know carbon fiber is not for everyone, but it's beautifully done here. The next pen on the list came from the UK. Was also sent to me from the UK uh, by <clears throat> John who uh, sent me this uh, because he was thinning out his collection and this is a pen that I absolutely love. I think it's it's stellar, it's fantastic. It's a, I think this is a design icon uh, and I don't use that term lightly. But here we have the Yarder Lead Viceroy Grand in the Victorian finish. Solid sterling silver. This is a heavy pen. 
and I mean I'll show you the barrel that's thick it's silver it's beautiful cartridge converter fill pen but the nib is spectacular 18 karat solid gold and then the CEO of um, Yardler told me that it's nickel plated you don't hear that a lot uh, but nickel plated to match the the silver trims of the pen and this nib is spectacular it always writes nice rich flow without being a gusher perfectly tuned out of the box didn't have to do anything to this nice broad nib and it writes and I think it's pretty hard to not love this I'm particularly I'm putting that in the sun so you can see how shiny it is that's fantastic solid silver so it really feels like you're holding something considerably I mean it's it's a massive pen it's not huge it's just nice big heavy solid pen and I think this is a stellar model I know this is a grail pen to many people and rightly so because it is beautiful and I love it from the UK we go back to Italy uh, and even though it goes back to Italy it actually goes to Australia because this is a Visconti model it looks maybe it looks like it's black it's actually a super dark blue like an indigo uh, and this is the Kakadu which was uh, limited to Australia so I, I got this from an Australian seller on eBay the Kakadu is bigger than an opera elements or I should say a regular opera sized Visconti as you can see there but it's just a little shorter than an opera master it's just a little small I love this pen the reason I love it is that the size is perfect not as big as a master not as heavy as a master but bigger than an opera and I think that size is perfect uh, I, it came with a medium nib I thought I got it with a medium uh, 18 karat but I put on an old 18 karat Visconti broad nib which is super juicy and absolutely delicious to use also, double reservoir power filler works perfectly, and I love this pen. I love the finish, the very, very dark blue, and the light brown swirls. I'll show you a close up of this here. Uh, it, it works. This is not an ultra swirly one. I'm sure there are one, there's ones out there with, with more swirls, but to me, perfect. Lovely size, lovely weight. I like this so much that when I uh, went to, to defend my uh, dissertation, I took this to take notes as I was asked questions. So I think this is a really nice piece. If I could change anything about this, I wonder if this wouldn't look very nice with gold trims, but the silver color works for me as well. Makes it a little cooler. Okay, I promise it's the final Visconti in the lineup, but this is a pen that I absolutely love and when I got into fountain pens, I'll come back to that in a second. I got this, I love this, but I found a video on YouTube of Bertram Ozer from Bertram's Inkwell, and he used one of these pens. And I fell in love with it, I have been looking for one for years, and in the end it was Gourmet Pens who found one, and I got it. This is an Opera Master from the original Opera Master release, that was a blue one, a brown one which is known as tortoise it's known as tobacco and there was a, a clear one with blue swirls this is the tobacco and I love this pen this is a, a beautiful amber color that I think works perfectly nice gold trim shiny beautiful I love it and it has a little bit of um, stuff like you know in the the material in the the celluloid so it looks beautiful and i love it this has a very juicy double broad palladium nib on it that i kind of stubbed a bit um and i think now it's perfect double reservoir power filler enormous incapacity if you fill this up completely it was a limited edition but i love it a beautiful big juicy beefy pen um i think if you fill these up completely they're about 60 grams of pen that's a lot so I mean serious serious pen and I think it's beautiful so I'm very very happy I got this I sold off sold off a number of the opera masters I had just had too many but this one I keep I think it's fantastic that was the Viscontis 
I have four left. So we go to another Italian pen. Uh, this is a pen that I think is stunning from a company that apparently went under this year. Uh, sorry, that sadly went under this year. Um, Omas, another Italian pen maker. This is the new style Paragon. It's big, and this is the Arco Celluloid, which a lot of people consider to be one of the most beautiful celluloids ever made. And I find it hard to disagree with that. It's stunning. Even on the sides, you have very nice, fine lines. And on the front and back, you have this beautiful stuff, and it's fantastic. The Paragon itself, a 12-sided uh, profile. Nice and large. This one has a Vermeil um, uh, section. Makes it a little heavy towards the nib, but I like that. Makes a very pleasant, uh, natural writing balance. 18 karat nib. This is a fine nib and it's a fantastic fine. Not scratchy at all. Beautifully tuned. Flows very well. Didn't have to do anything about this. Out of the box, it was perfect. And I think it's fantastic. Also a nice, large pen. The original uh, Paragons were a bit smaller. They were the size of what's um, uh, kind of what, what a, a Milord is now. A beautiful, interesting clip too with the wheel, the arch. This pen works. It's solid. Piston filler holds a nice amount of ink. Hard to go wrong with this. Now we come to three of my pretty much all-time favorites, and. Um, the first of those is also made by Omas. I have sold off a lot of my pens, just because I didn't use them enough. And there is one I sold that I actually regretted selling. And that is the original Omas 360 Magnum. It's a large pen, it's triangular in profile, and that may sound horribly uncomfortable, but I find it perfect. This one has a nice juicy medium nib, just a medium, nothing fancy, but it's beautifully tuned, it works very well. It has a wonderful arrow uh, 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 on it, which I think works very, very well. It's very pretty. It's lovely in hand. It's nice and big. It's a piston filler. It's a great celluloid. It looks like it's black in darkness, but in bright light. You can see it has a very, very dark blue color, actually. Greek key on the center band. This is a perfect pen. It's big. It's not super heavy because it's just celluloid. I don't even think there's a lot of metal on the inside. Um, in piston and such, but it works. This works. Perfect, super comfy, fantastic nib, piston filler. This is a bulletproof design. The next pen in the lineup is my King of Pens, sorry, my classic pens LB5, which was based on the King of Pen uh, that Sailor does. This is the Cayenne finish. It's red, it's beautiful, it's a diffusion bonded acrylic, it has a lot of depth, it's super warm in color. It has a Naginata, no, a Nagahara cross point nib, which is basically two nibs superimposed, giving an enormously wide line. This is pen fiction. The size, the weight, the balance, the color, the nib, everything works. It all comes together in this, and I love it. This is perfect. Also, the size, nice, large, oversized, without being super heavy. It's very light, actually. It's pleasant to use. You can use this for hours. Your hand won't tire. The only problem is, this does not hold enough ink. But you can always refill, especially with this. I mean, this is a paintbrush nib, so you have to refill this quite a lot. But that's the way it is. I still think it's a fantastic pen. The final pen of the 12 of my GOAT pens is something I obtained this year as a gift, a very special gift. It goes in a special pouch because it doesn't fit any other pen pouch I have. This is the Namiki Emperor and this is the pen all others bow to because it is enormous, it's fat and it works. Even though it's big, even though it has a massive diameter, I find it very, very comfortable. It has a broad nib. I got this pre-owned. Someone stubbed this nib. They did a good job. It is a massive nib. That's, uh, well, I mean, Namiki calls this number 50. 
Uh, what do I have? This would be a standard number six nib on the stipula. You can see the difference. It's enormous. The whole pen is one giant eyedropper. It holds about four milliliters of ink, which is insane if you consider that the average converter holds 0 0.7, 0 0.9 milliliters of ink. Unscrew the valve. The more you do that, sort of the, the richer the ink flow gets. You get a massive pen with an enormous ink capacity, a beautiful nib, a nice rich flow, and if you're really insane, you can post it and then you have something that looks absolutely absurd. Fantastic pen, Urushi lacquer, stunning. This is a stunning pen, and I absolutely love this. And to me, this is the greatest of all time. Now, there's two more pens I wanted to mention. Let's call it honorable mention. Because if we're talking about greatest of all time, I've tried to make this personal story, make it personal why I like a lot of these so much. There's two I have right here that are very special and are very dear to me. And those two are in this pouch. It's a simple Burba pouch. Burba is a um, Dutch uh, uh, brand. The reason I like these ones so much is that these were my granddad's pens. And he always had them in this pouch. He always carried them around in there, and these are a uh, gold Parker 75 set. It's a ballpoint and a fountain pen. A uh, fountain pen with, if I'm not mistaken, it's a uh, medium nib. Um, is this super spectacular? It's a gold Parker. Uh, I don't think there's anything particularly insanely special about it, but they're special to me. And that's part of the, the joy of using fountain pens. They're personal. And if you have something from someone you love, as a keepsake, as an inheritance, you always have a piece of them with you. I think that's what makes this special. These were the pens that set me off into the journey of fountain pens. Because when I inherited these, I started to research them. I found Brian Goulet's videos. I found that there is a whole community online dedicated to fountain pens and that is what got me started doing these types of videos so if you like if you like the videos if you like the stuff i do these are the pens you have to thank because that's what got me to do this okay we are now going to watch how all of these pens write because i can't just show them to you and not show you how they write that's what's coming up next i hope this was useful so far i hope i haven't bored you to death if I have, there's an off button, you know. Um, let's see how it writes. And I'm glad to see you later. Bye bye. Okay, so here we go with. The Italics Parsons Essential. In the uh, uh, broad. Italic. And as we know, the quick brown fox the lazy dog. Then we have I really think it's a very very nice uh, nice pen. We have, I'm going to call it the Ackermann Dual Fold, uh, Diamond Claret, Ackermann Parker Dual Fold, I guess, with the Parker Italic. Oops, Italic. Very nice, crisp Italic. The ink is uh, Asbury Brown. Quick brown from over fox. Let's leave it at that before we butcher it even more. The stipula Etruria with the very nice, rich, I thought it was 1.3 millimeter italic. Ink is um, Mont Blanc. Toffee brown, whoops. 
I'm using very smooth rhodia paper so if something skips a bit more often it's because of the smoothness that's why I'm using that underlay here too jumps just to make this not too long I'm not, not going to write the full sentence uh, just give you an idea okay and we have the carbon dream with the oblique stub oblique stub gold also nice bit of line variation this one is starting to run a little low on ink I think Let me just get some more in there there we go it's better Montblanc Blue Hour ink Yard of Lead Viceroy Grand with the broad nib Montblanc Irish Green Super smooth nib. Writes perfectly. It's that's jumps, jumps, but you'll just have to bear with me. The good old Visconti Opera Elements Fire. The ink is uh, uh, Diamine Hope Pink. Medium nib. And uh, as I said, this 14K nib has some spring to it. Very, very nice. On to the Visconti Kakadu 18 karat broad nib. horrible writing but you'll get the point very very smooth writing experience okay, it's the last one I'm going to do on this page Visconti opera master in tobacco uh, double broad now kind of stubbed by yours truly palladium by the way not gold And um, Mont <clears throat> sorry, Montblanc Toffee Brown. Very nice, very wet writer. Okay, four more to go. Let's continue with the Omas Paragon. The ink is Esbiary Brown with a fine nib. Super nice writer, nice and fine line, without being feedbacky. It's nice and smooth. Very very nice nib, and again that material, that's stellar. Then we have another Omas, the Omas 360 Magnum with um, a Pilot Hiroshizuku Konpeki medium nib 18k very smooth very nice ink flow I really really like this one classic pens LB5 I'm going to start very perpendicular to the paper do that for a reason. Here you have something that's this is already abroad for some manufacturers. This is a bit finer. 
uh, it's the Cayenne. Now I'm completely perpendicular to the paper, so my handwriting is terrible. Um, this is the cross point. I'm just trying to save some space. Were you to use this pen to its full potential, then you get this. So that's pretty much a felt tip pen. Very, very nice. So as you can see, you can get various line widths depending on how exactly you hold the pen. Okay, the final goat pen for this year, the Namiki Emperor. I'm going to open that valve just a bit. Shouldn't be necessary for such a short writing session, but I want to anyway. Uh, <clears throat> Vermilion. It's also a uh, a black with a broad nib that has been stubbed and seems to be very slightly oblique. That's why I rotate a little bit as I write. Uh, the ink. Uh, sorry, this was um, corn poppy red by Montblanc, and this is um, yard lead claret. Very, very, very nice writer. Okay, so that was my personal emphasis on personal goat pens of 2016. I wish you all a very Merry Christmas. And a happy 2017. Incredible, it's 2017 already. Guys, I hope this was useful. I hope at least it was a little bit of eye candy and, and visual fun. And um, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.